Hey tennis fans, I'm Grace Carter and this is Tennis Now presented by Tennis Express. Tennis Express, order today and it ships today. The WTA took a strong stand for human rights, pulling out of China in support of Peng Shui. But for now, they stand alone. Two of the game's governing bodies aren't joining the WTA in that effort. WTA CEO Steve Simon announced that they will not play in China or Hong Kong and that the decision could go through the 2022 season. The only way the WTA will go back is if China agrees to an independent investigation into Peng Shui's sexual assault claims against a former Chinese vice premier and if they can verify her safety. It's the first time a sports league has taken such a stand against China. But the ATP and ITF will not follow suit. So why not? Skeptics say easy. It's about money. They don't want to lose the millions of dollars they make in China. But the organization leaders say it's not that simple. ATP chairman Andrea Gaudenzi says doing business in China is the best way to create opportunity and make an impact. He says sports can have a positive impact on society. Some ATP players, though, say that is just spin. They say Gaudenzi has been preaching unity between the game's governing bodies, but now that it's time to act on those words, he doesn't do it. The ITF also claims it's about more than just money. President David Haggerty says the ITF doesn't want to punish a billion people who aren't involved in the Peng Shui case. Haggerty told the BBC the ITF is committed to helping resolve Peng Shui's sex assault allegations. He says his organization will continue to work behind the scenes to find a resolution. But he says the ITF is tennis's governing body worldwide and it's responsible for grassroots development. And he doesn't want to punish any tennis fans. The ITF will continue junior and senior events in China. So at this point, the WTA and Steve Simon are standing alone. Simon says he just cannot, in good conscience, send his players and his staff to China, knowing about all the human rights violations and especially the Peng Shui case. The ATP and the ITF say continuing to do business in China will keep channels of communication open between tennis and the Chinese government officials. They claim to be looking at the big picture and that shutting down tennis in China simply will not resolve Peng Shui's sex assault charge and it could potentially damage the growth of tennis. So what do you say? Who is making the right choice here? Sound off in the comment section and we'll see you next time.